What we're showing here today is a millimeter wave based system that is moving towards what we envision 5G to be. It should be noted that 5G and millimeter wave are not synonymous. There is 5G that will be operate in the sub six gigahertz band as well as in the millimeter wave. What we're showing here are some of the enabling technologies for millimeter wave. We have a base station that's back this way where we have two antenna systems. Each one has eight by eight array uh, forming 48 beams. And we have two of these arrays, each of which has two polarizations. So we can create four independent streams to talk to the user equipment, which we have over here. And it also has an antenna array of eight elements. So what we're showing here is the system operating on 800 megahertz bandwidth. And that's made up of eight component carriers, each of which is 100 megahertz. So we're using one of these component carriers to carry the video. And we've sort of locked in a manual QoS so that it's good and solid. On the other seven carriers, we're simply running data at its fastest rate. So we're showing the 4K video in the upper left. In the lower left, we're showing the aggregated throughput on the left side of that and just some of the concepts that we're demonstrating here today, including multi-user or uh, single-user MIMO, uh, beam forming, beam tracking, variable TDD, so we can actually change the up rate, uh, uplink and downlink amounts to get different rates. In the upper right, what we're showing is a view from the base station of the room and of the user equipment. Each one of these white dots is illustrative of where the beams might point if they were being formed on a particular beam according to this uh, diagram here. So the green circle that you see here, you will notice it when there are more people in here moving between a couple of different beams as it optimizes the throughput versus uh, the interference or blockages that it sees in each beam. So you'll see it going between beam number 30 and number 42. We're also showing here the throughput on each one of the carriers individually. These get aggregated for the total throughput. Down here, we're showing the probability of the modulation encoding scheme that's being used. And all of this is being done in real time. So you can get an idea of how the system's operating and at what levels of forward error correction coding it's using, what modulation rates it's using. Here we have the block error rate per carrier. So with the video, we wanted to ensure that that's a good solid video. So we made sure that we choose an MCS level and an FEC level that gives us very, very low error rates. The others were shooting at a target of a 5% block error rate. And so you can see how that changes here and the MCS and FEC change to ensure it stays at about that level. And then in the lower right is the probability of what rank is being used, and that has to do with MIMO. So there are four independent streams. As long as the radio carrier is of the right quality, it can use each one of these streams independently. If the quality starts to degrade, it may reduce the number of streams that it uses. So that's being shown here. So this allows us to show some of the capability with millimeter wave. Um, this is being done at 15 gigahertz. We will be operating very soon at 28 gigahertz as well. And uh, this is the first time that AT&T has come out in, uh, in the public with our uh, demonstration of some of the work that we're doing. We're doing additional work in our labs here in Austin. Uh, we're test bed where as we continue to improve the capability, we are adding those to our test bed and continuing to work and feed back into 3GPP and use the benefit of our knowledge there to help improve the standards.